Coming up next is Terry Payne with some public information you might find interesting. We're standing here at DeSoto Park, a park that is not often featured but is part of the city's park systems. It's located at 1700 Park Avenue. Correct. Very close to the intersection of Gorge Road and I'm here with Parks and Recreation mm -hmm. Director Gene Wallace to talk about DeSoto Park and some exciting news that is upcoming for improvements to the park. Welcome Gene. Thank you Terry, thanks for having me. Why don't you fill us in about the history and background of this beautiful little park? Well, this location, this park, was actually the very first water supply for the city of Hot Springs. And that was back in 1881. Even before the other lakes around the area were built, the Soto Park was here. Of course, it wasn't a park, it was a water supply. And then, in 1943, it was recommissioned as a city park and was built with prison labor. So fast forward to today and some of the 1943 elements are still remaining. Interesting. Now people call this a gateway park. What does it function as, you know, at this particular area in Hot Springs? This park is the very first municipal park that visitors to Hot Springs will encounter and it really is a welcome to them as they enter the city limits of Hot Springs and the Hot Springs National Park along scenic Highway 7. Now when people think of DeSoto Park, what are the distinct distinctive elements in the park today? Well, naturally the, the, the overriding element is the majestic shade and the majestic trees that are located here. There is about 160 trees in this small area, um, which is definitely has to be taken into consideration in any type of a planning project. Uh, and then obviously behind us is the M60 tank, which is a tribute to peace. It was dedicated to the city of Hot Springs in 1992, November 11th, and stands as a reminder to peace in the world. And the military order of the Purple Heart post 436 arranged to have it brought to Hot Springs and helped us install it and dedicate it. There is a creek that runs through this park. Tell us about that. There is a creek. There's a meandering creek, which was the original water supply at the time. And it is uh, in now in need of repair. It needs dredging and the bridge needs to be um, rebuilt. The dam needs to be inspected and reworked. So there is a lot of work on the creek side of the park. Which brings us to the planned improvements to the park. How is this coming about? Who's involved? And what can we be looking at in the future? Well, DeSoto Park has been the number one park project of the Hot Springs Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee for about seven years now. And each year we try to put a little money in the budget to do a conceptual master plan to rework the whole park and bring it up to the glory that it could be. Uh, this past year, we did receive some money in the Parks and Recreation budget to do the plan. The plan is finished. I have a copy of it right here. And it's also um, posted on our, uh, city, or our, our Parks and Recreation Facebook page, as well as copies available for review at the Parks and Recreation Administrative Office at 111 Opera. A lot of input went into this plan. We had several public hearings. We contacted neighbors, adjoining property owners, Park Avenue Community Association. Just about anybody that would have an interest in this particular location was, was contacted. Um, and you asked me about the Gateway Park. Uh, the, uh, the answer actually to that question is DeSoto Park is a gateway park, but it's also a neighborhood park. So the gateway being the gateway to Hot Springs and Hot Springs National Park. So the first restrooms you encounter, the first playground you encounter as a tourist, but it also is a neighborhood park for residents of District 1, particularly the Park Avenue Community Association. So it's a hybrid park. And so, of course, they have a very keen interest in the park's development. Correct. Yes. Okay, so we have um, these planned developments for the park that I assume will be phased in. Tell oh, us, yes. Yes. Tell us about some of the detailed 
uh, the details of the improvements that we could okay. be looking forward to. Uh, since the park does need such a major overhaul, and the only thing remaining will be the tank behind us, it is planned to be a four to five year phase project. Uh, naturally, the funding will have to come from a variety of sources because it will be too expensive to do at once. But in the plans, we have a, a new parking lot, landscape parking lot, with directional entry and exit, and now it's, it's just a free-for-all off of Highway 7 to come in and out of the park. Uh, we have the pond cleaned out, we have uh, creek bank stabilization, boardwalks, a little area to fish, a major uh, new entry point into the park. The dam is repaired. We have two small playgrounds, three small pavilions, a student circle for educational um, activities, and also a series of natural trails that run up and down the mountains and also connect to the National Park Service trail system. How exciting. This is a lot to look forward to. And as we wrap up, since we're already out of time, how can people f uh, find out about the project's development and can they be involved in any way? Well, yes, definitely. Um, the Park Avenue Community Association is actively fundraising. Uh, you can contact the Parks and Recreation Office to see if, in particular, you want to sponsor an element of the park or um, a, a piece of playground equipment. We have a donation account set up for this. And I would just say stay in touch, keep up on the city's website, keep up on Parks and Recreation website, keep up with City Facebook, Parks and Recreation Facebook, and we will keep you involved. Thank you so much, Jean. This is going to be an exciting project to see unfold. And if you haven't visited DeSoto Park at all, come out and see how it is now. As you say, the, the potential, the, the sheer beauty of these mature trees, it's, a, it's a, just a beautiful place as is. And we can look forward to all the improvements in the future. Thank you, Jean, for joining us today. And next week, we'll bring you more City News.